I don't know about you, but I am kind of tired of Taylor Swift. Maybe not of Taylor Swift herself, but I am pretty exhausted with opening TikTok at 6 in the morning, barely awake, and getting a Taylor Swift themed video that is devoid of reality. Are you kidding me? Us Gaylers, we are Ukraine, Taylor. You just handed Russia nuclear bombs. In the immortal words of Taylor herself, you need to calm down. <laughs> month, TikTok has burnt to the ground over theories that Taylor Swift is coming out as gay, or bisexual, or some sort of LGBTQ identity. Queer, gay, sapphic, Taylor is more than straight. She's not just an ally, she's part of the community. The rumors have spread like wildfire as Taylor gets ready to promote her, or as she's not getting ready to promote, she's promoting her new album, which I freaking forget which album it is, I think it's number 10. It's an album. I kind of got tired of Taylor after the release of Red. That was great, great content. I just want 1989. I don't care about anything else. And I'm just not feeling the mayhem with Midnight's. I'm sorry. I'm just not into you right now. Um, and it's not even Taylor that I'm not into. I'm not into the fans. It's a little too much. It's me and Harry Styles are in the same boat. I just am tired of enjoying an artist and then that enjoyment becoming a capitalistic frenzy that's all about becoming the next viral piece of content. That's another topic for another day about how we get burnt out on artists when we don't consume them like a capitalist. I'm not gonna even address that anymore. Taylor went from SNL spotlight last year to all of a sudden her fans losing it, lo absolutely losing it over this woman not being gay or maybe being gay. I don't know, it's not my job to say. But let's talk about it. Let's talk about why people think Taylor is gay. As you can see, I'm absolutely thrilled to talk about that. And then let's talk about whether it's right to defend someone's supposed straightness, sexuality, to, to debate it. Let's talk about it because I can't open TikTok without someone talking about it. So here's my two cents in the matter, which is the most important bit of the conversation. Case closed, no more videos after this video. You are welcome. <laughs> Gaylers and gay subtext. I think a lot of Gaylers started without gay subtext. I don't think the gay subtext of Carly Kloss and Taylor Swift and Diana Agron and Taylor Swift was very subtext. <laughs> Let's be honest, Tumblr was not subtext. It was the meat of the matter back in the day. And I'm not gonna debate whether there was more going on with those two intense friendships. If Dumois had existed back then, we would not be where we are now. We would know the truth of it. That is for sure. But Gaylers come from this truther that Taylor is gay. It's a truther movement. It's a school of, and I have, I pulled this definition straight from the source, urbandictionary.com, the source of all your internet memes, needs, and culture. Anyway, a gayler, a person who believes Taylor Swift is gay. Gaylers are very observant, group of alphabet mafias who read the gay subtext of Taylor in all of her songs. The Taylor does have a lot of gay subtext in her songs. I will admit it. Dress, you cannot tell me that song is not a gay anthem. Then you have Lover, the album, which is full of gay subtext. And then the latest, uh, Midnight's Mayhem. I have not set up for a single midnight to see a single song name drop because I go to work at 4 in the morning. So I am not staying up till 12. I have gone to bed at 8 p.m. So I am far and away asleep at midnight. But I see it when I get to work at 6 in the morning, barely awake, trying to chug my coffee, and y'all are talking about the names of these songs. I don't understand why we care so much about the names on an album. It doesn't bother me. I enjoy the album when it comes out. I could not tell you a single name of a song before an album releases. But Taylor's ultimate fans seem to really love it. I'll give them that. Um, and then the last time that she dropped an album name, or that, not the album name, I do love an album name, a song name, a track name on the album, it was Lavender Haze. I didn't even watch the reel Taylor made without, I didn't know anything. I saw Lavender Haze and I knew this album had a lot of like throwbacks to the mid 20th century and I was a bit confused because Lavender, the Lavender Panic, 
not the lavender haze, but the lavender panic was a well-known time in American history when the heads of government went after LGBTQ employees within the federal government and fired them. So it was kind of interesting to me to call it the lavender haze when the lavender purge was like a well-known time in history when LGBTQ people were persecuted. Lavender, a lavender relationship, was a well-known phrase used throughout the 1970s and the mid-20th century, I should say, to to confer or infer 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 is the word i want to use infer a, a gay female relationship a lesbian relationship or a bisexual sapphic relationship some sort of gay woman was going on with lavender lavender feminists who were lesbian feminists i've made a whole video on this talking about lavender and how the phrase was used kind of like a slur like lavender parade or you know the lavender per you know it was just like lavender was a color and not just a color, it was a phrase used to infer a, a lesbian woman and to kind of a derogatory phrase that has been reclaimed by lesbians as a positive. So when I heard lavender haze, in any context that it refers to a relationship, I'm not thinking a man, I'm thinking a lesbian <laughs> or a sapphic woman. Um, mainly because that is the historical context. And then Taylor came out and said it was related to Mad Men and I was kind of like, you thought that show was interesting? <laughs> You could get past the asshole that was the main character. Um, that, that's literally what I thought when I heard that she watched Mad Men. But there was a meltdown on the internet because people were so offended. They thought Taylor was coming out, that she had been dropping gay hints all of August and September, and that it was very harmful to take a phrase that was used by queer people and to turn it into the glorification of a straight relationship. The glorification of a straight relationship. That's like been Taylor's whole thing in life. Now Taylor writes very personal music. She writes music about her exes and dating and her boyfriend of six years. And when she was talking about the song title, she said she wanted to write a, that this, this song and writing about this relationship was specifically to address weird rumors about her relationship with her, her boyfriend. And a lot of people took that phrase, weird rumors, to infer gaylers, to infer people who look for gay subtext in Taylor's songs. And that was very offensive to a lot of people. I saw fans who believe Taylor is straight and who would never speculate, speculate on her sexuality attacking people who have speculated on her sexuality. And there was an all out conflict brewing on the Intergrams, Intergrams? I mean the internets. The internets, TikTok, Instagram, all of it was brewing about Taylor's relationships. And there's a lot of people arguing and backbiting and backstabbing. It was, it was a hot mess. Uh, and Taylor just posted a song title and an explanation and dipped and didn't come out to address the homophobia that was present in her community, her fandom. She didn't address the rabid onslaught of hate towards Gaylers. None of that. She, she released her song title and dipped. Um, and also, you know, badass business move. I totally get it. Creates buzz for the album. She doesn't need to address it. And she, by not addressing it, she continues to perpetuate speculation and media focus on her life on TikTok. So, you know, I understand. I I can see it, capitalistic queen. <laughs> Taylor is releasing an album, which led to all the speculation that there was more than an album release. And the fans have connected the album release to her sexuality in a way that makes it seem like if you're going to release music you owe us your sexuality i will say as an observer that is what it feels like yes i feel a little bit slighted by the song choice and the way it seems to ignore the context of the lavender history of lesbian relationships but i don't think lesbians have copyrighted the use of lavender we have we don't own the word lavender it feels a little bit not respectful especially as someone who posts girl in red in your instagram story just check in with your sapphic friends and ask <laughs> you know um i feel like you could be more self-aware of what that word means in relationships and you could be more self-aware that calling people who think you might be gay weird rumors is kind of rude but it's also rude to speculate about someone's sexuality. And no celebrity owes anyone anything about their sexuality. The age of Dumois and gossip blinds 
and tabloid, rapid tabloids seem to have dimmed our perception on human people. <laughs> because these aren't just celebrities. These are actual people with real life relationships and families and real emotions and trauma. And Taylor has been traumatized by the press before. She has literally had to disappear to protect her own emotional sanity. And I don't think labeling yourself the Paris Hilton of lesbian TikTok is something to brag about because Paris Hilton personally led to the outing of several people who were not ready to be publicly out. He intentionally harmed people and used gossip as a weapon in order to propel his own fame at the expense of other people's humanity. And I don't think anyone should do that. I don't think it is healthy or good or kind to take your love of a person, your adoration of a musician, or the fact that you like someone and use that to create a career on gossip. I just think that's wrong. And that seems to be a celebrated cultural movement right now with the widespread use of pages like Demo and different types of cultural celebrity gossip fandoms becoming mainstream instead of just, you know, little blogs in the internet where people could go chat. And I think TikTok has distorted what it means to be a fan into stalking to an extent. That is, a, that is another topic um, that goes outside the realm of speculating about sexuality. But I think the intense microscope that we put on celebrities in order to know every aspect of their life that we then turn to their sexuality has blended together in an unhealthy, toxic manner. And demanding that people cannot write songs that have multiple interpretations, and that as a gay person, when we listen to, we see ourselves in the music, that if we see ourselves in the music, that person must be gay too, that's harmful. And art will always be subjective. Art is in the eye of the beholder because all of us can see ourselves in different lenses of art. And Taylor Swift's music is no different. You could, she could be writing about Joe Jonas, but I'm gonna think of my ex. Um, that doesn't mean she's gay or that she dated the same person as me. It's just the context and the person who's listening to it. Now, I do believe Taylor is well aware of culture and can use phrases that have gay interpretations in order to appeal to a wider number of fans, but also to make it less specific to her own straight relationships and perhaps to to make it more timeless because just writing about a relationship with joe jonas is not going to be timeless i'm sorry it just isn't going to be but if you have a song and a storyline and an album that incorporates aspects of relationships that have existed throughout human history with cultural ties to LGBTQ relationships and straight relationships, and even people who haven't dated, and you interweave that all together and you create this beautiful story that all of us can see ourselves in, in different kinds of ways and different kinds of aspects, it's going to be a timeless work of art that will speak to many people and can also lead to people thinking you're gay. I'm sorry, it really does. It, I am not, I'm not blind. Like, I see what the gaylers mean. I just refuse to speculate. Um, sometimes it, it's, I listen to dress and I think no straight person could write this. I'm sorry. I've never heard a man think this, but I'm not a man. I've never dated a man. So maybe there's one out there who does, but I don't even, I just don't even, it's hard to argue with me about that. Dress is the gayest song I've ever heard. Anyway, that aside, let's move on to my next point. <laughs> I see this phrase used a lot and it does bother me. The phrase that we're all a little bit gay so it's totally okay to try to figure out if someone's a part of the alphabet mafia. And I, I empathize with it. I empathize with the fact that assuming people are straight is not good. But sometimes you shouldn't assume what they are anyway. You shouldn't assume they're straight or that they're gay. Just like don't assume. Just wait till them till they can tell you. And I've seen influencers say that people assuming they're straight is the reason they assume people are gay. Because if they're gay and people assume they're straight, they've been hurt by that, so now they're going to assume people are gay instead of straight. 
And I empathize with that claim. I just don't think it's necessary to speculate or to assume that a person is straight or gay and, just, and two wrongs don't make a right. So just because assuming people are straight is wrong doesn't mean that assuming people are gay is right. And this leads into the, the toxic idea that if someone is negatively treating the LGBTQ community, then they must secretly be a part of that community. I have been told so many times after I told the story of my dad's blatant homophobia that my dad must be gay. And that is incredibly hurtful. It is incredibly hurtful to be told a man who said that all gay people should be executed must be gay. Why would you tell me that he must be gay? Why would you tell me that he's been secretly sleeping with men? I know my father. I know he isn't doing that. And to assume and to make an excuse for homophobia that they secretly must be gay is just, is just horrifically vile and disgusting. I've also seen people say that TERFs must be trans. They're secretly trans at heart and they don't know it. Why would you want to make that excuse for people? Sometimes people are vile and evil and there's no way to sugarcoat that. And I understand that people want to live in a world where sexuality is irrelevant, that it doesn't matter if you're gay or straight, but that world does not yet exist. Right now, it does matter. It does matter that you are harming people by assuming their sexuality, that you are harming people by telling those who have been hurt by homophobia that the people who hurt them were also part of their community. That matters. You cannot dismiss our real life trauma that we experience via homophobia by saying, well, they must be part of your community. And you can't make being part of my community so negative that it creates internalized homophobia. You can't excuse homophobia by saying, well, it's because they're gay, because then you're saying gay is so bad and evil that it is necessarily homophobic on itself. I'm, I'm really worked up over this, and I didn't even realize I was gonna be worked up over this, but it's just, a, it's just a comment that I've seen over and over and over again on my social media on discussion posts, all over the internet. And it needs to stop. It needs to stop right now, as soon as possible. Um, and as a quick reminder, if you're an ally, you are not part of the LGBTQ community. Saying we're, we're all allies, we're all a little bit gay, is not helpful. It is not. Don't try to erase the real life experiences of LGBTQ people by brushing over all people as, well, we're all a little bit gay and therefore we all understand where you're coming from, or they don't need to come out because we're all a little bit gay, or we can assume their sexuality because we're all a little bit gay. That is all toxic in different ways and actively continues to perpetuate stereotypes and harms the LGBTQ community. That's my little soapbox for the day. Uh, well, probably not because I haven't finished talking, but okay. Let's move on to my next point. Um, I don't have really good segues apparently because I do not. I did not write a script. I just wrote some notes. Anyway, we're all we're not all gay, and therefore some people think that using queer language or queer coded life choices means that you are queer baiting. What the f what in the world is queer baiting? Queer baiting is when someone creates a character on a TV show who is coded as gay and then they never come out as gay. That is what queer baiting is. Uh, that is also used in books and movies. It is not when real life people don't live up to the expectations that you've set. Just because someone acts a certain way, talks a certain way, lives a certain way, does not make them gay. And if they don't come out for you, they are not queer baiting you. They are a real life person with real life choices that might be different than you or similar to you, but real life people cannot queer bait because no one owes you your freaking their freaking sexuality. No one owes us who they are. That is their choice to make. If they choose to come out to you, you better act you better act right and treat them with respect if they choose not to come out to you you also better act right and treat them with respect it is absolutely wrong to demand that so, because someone is effeminate is like say a man is effeminate or a woman is androgynous that they must come out to you that they must admit their sexuality to you and just because a celebrity 
like Harry Styles is in a dress or Taylor Swift is writing queer coded lyrics does not mean that they're queer baiting you because they never have to come out to you. As long as now it, I do, it is frustrating when someone says that they're not a member of your community and then says something judgmental or derogatory about your community. That is wrong. But it does not seem, I have not seen Taylor Swift doing that. She has said multiple times that she's an ally and that she wants to celebrate the community, but that she's not part of the community. I, that is not wrong. It is capitalism and capitalists will always capitalize on communities. Um, Target isn't queer baiting us by selling us pride merch. A celebrity isn't queer baiting by appealing to an audience when they know they have queer fans. They're using you, but they're not queer baiting you. Um, is it wrong to use an audience? It might be, but it is something that all celebrities, everyone does. Everyone does. The wife guy who's secretly cheating on his wife and covering it up and still maintaining the persona of being a wife guy. The kind TV host whose entire career is built on kindness, but who's actually an asshole behind the scenes. That's capitalism for you, baby. Or the Love Island contestant who you know is on the show to find love. That's why they're there, they love love, but they're actually in a relationship um, and you don't find out till the show ends. I feel pretty baited there. That, that is their own personal lives, that is their own personal issues, and it's capitalism at work. They don't owe you anything. You're, yes, it would be nice to not be deceitful, but by someone living differently privately than they are publicly, that doesn't mean they're queer baiting. It just means that they're capitalists and they're good at making money. Celebrity and capitalism blend personal identity together in a really toxic way that is incredibly harmful, especially when relationships are involved. When the wife guy cheats on his wife, it's not just his public persona that's affected, it's his wife and children. When a celebrity seems to be queer coded, but is in a straight relationship, and when people speculate on their sexuality, it's not just the fans who are affected and the celebrity themselves, it's also their relationship and their private life. And I can't imagine how freaking messed up that is mentally to be in a relationship and have people speculating that it's a fake relationship or that you're actually queer or that you're queer baiting people. I just can't imagine how honestly harmful that would be to my own mental health if somebody said that about me. Just maybe we shouldn't say it about celebrities. You'll know I said I was really tired of Taylor Swift. I'm really tired of the Taylor Swift fans more than Taylor Swift. I'm still going to listen to Midnight's when it premieres. But in between now and when Midnight's comes out, instead of watching endless TikToks of people arguing about Taylor's sexuality and queer baiting and the back and forth between her fans, let's instead of doing that, let's all, let's all celebrate actual queer artists because it is now it is october is lgbtq history month and these people are making lgbtq history and they deserve our support and if you can't leave the drama and you need to hear about someone's ex why not put on fletcher this video was made completely possible by my patrons so thank y'all for subscribing and supporting me and I'm going to drop the Patreon in the, sub in the subscription box, S description, description box. So please check out my Patreon. Let me know what other topics you want me to cover, what you thought about this video. And if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do that and hit that notification bell so that you will know about all my future videos. D was this an appropriate ad? I feel like this was an appropriate ad. Um, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all later. See ya. What do I mean by straight from the source? I don't even know. I have to figure out what in the fuck I mean. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service.